I'm pretty much just going to show you the, the video first, um, three excerpts from the video, so you can get a feel for it, and then we're going to talk about it. Um, this is the video that I'm sharing in the screening room. Um, but yes, I'm an interdisciplinary visual artist, um, and I work in various mediums. And um, this work is really representative of, of my work um, and where my work is now. So yeah, I'm excited for you to see it. these journeys by ourselves, the horse and the rider, identified as one, we make these journeys. Did I choose to return? Did I? Did I? Is this my design? Is this mine? We make these journeys by ourselves. Did I choose to leave? Did I? Did I choose to die? Is this mine? Is this of my making? Is this, is this mine? I heard it said once that memory, memory is, is immortality. immortality. Memory. Yeah, I, Memories. I remember? I, I, I think I, I remember so much. Remember. I remember so much. Sometimes I'm remember. hardly here. I remember. I remember, remember. I remember there. there. I remember before. before. I remember the after that has become the past. past. Sometimes my dreams are more active than my awake time. I remember my past. I remember Sometimes I spend my days processing my slumber. I remember. Decoding or recoding. Listening. I think I was lighter before. Not in shade, but in density. I was lighter. Yes. Less to remember. Less. Less to recall, less, less to forget. The action of replaying. I, within this clearing, I am clear. I am here and I am ready, I think. I am here to give, to birth. They distract you from what to manifest, to give birth to manifestation, from is coming from to align, to give birth to manifestation, it's coming from within you, contractions, it's growing, like a tree. It's, it's growing out of you, eruptions, it's erupting out of you, it wants to, it, wants it is to time, be. time is now, it wants to be, the truth is true, true. Universal, universal truth is, is true, true. Truth is true. Universal with truth. or without your understanding, understanding. your actions are the seeds you sow. This future is that tree that grows from the soil, affected by your soul's intention. We are tomorrow's fossils, fueling their momentum. Descended from ourselves, we regurgitate our realities. We return over and over, and over, over again. And I have to acknowledge us all. And their parables are mine to share. I give thanks to art. I give thanks to creativity. I give thanks to the source. Let me breathe. I have to breathe. Let me breathe. You think I'm blinking. I'm, I'm not. not. I see with my eyes closed. I see in the darkness. I see clearly. There are many like me. We, we, we know that memory is immortality. We remember. We remember so much. Sometimes we, sometimes, sometimes we are hardly here.
we make these journeys by ourselves. I woke up today feeling good. That never happens. That never happens. That never... I woke up and for the first time in a long while, I felt good. I think it's because of the way I went to sleep the night before. Every ovary, Growing up, every spell, I remember I have this vision every walking into my parents' bedroom and opening the door. And I saw my mom laying in bed and her eyes were rolling in the back of her head and her tongue was sticking out of her mouth and she didn't look well. And I feel like in an instant, someone pulled me out of the room and shut the door. Especially my family. And how lonely it felt to not live in my truth and let people know that I was hurting. And the molecules, they kind of represent the same thing for us. Um, the idea of moving in and out of dimensions. But we can focus ourselves into any dimension. We can focus ourselves into the um, dimension of poverty. If it's where we focus our attention on lack, we can focus ourselves into the dimension of enlightenment. If it's where we focus our attention and enlightenment is an in the now moment experience. If there is no completion in our universe, nothing ever ends. This is a universe of expansion, of creativity, and we are not separate from the creative process. We are the process. We are called to create. This time was different. This time was lighter. The fire came. Covering gentleness. Okay. A trans ancestral strength. Ancestral strength. Everything was covered in ashes. What changes? Was transformed. Particles blinking in and out of existence. This was a dance. There was a silence after the time. I flourish and I bloom. I release and I embrace. I receive and then we cleanse. I allow. We submerge. I transcend. And then I woke up. I am. Everything is God.
Well, first, I just want to say before I forget that I'm really grateful for everyone who helped me make that work possible, including um, the videographers and all of the people who submitted audio stories um, that were really personal stories, and also to the women that performed Intrepid 2 with me, um, Corinne, Cece, Cheryl, um, and um, yeah. Well, there was one, one more woman. Um, yeah, so thank, thank you to all of those women and um, Carla. So Intrepid is, is my work really is about um, healing transgenerational trauma. Um, and the work really teaches me to embrace and reconnect um, with transgenerational wisdom. Um, it teaches me to remember that in myself um, I wanted to show this image first because this image is actually um, from the uh, installation in which I did Intrepid 1 and Intrepid 2. Um, and for this piece, I, I created a video work that consisted of a three-channel video piece that was projected on these three panels that I built in the space. Um, and then I have fabric in the, in the actual installation and then there's also fabric in the film so it mirrors itself and there's a spiral within a spiral within a spiral. Um, so I just wanted to share that since it's not pictured in the film but this is the space where that is taking place, um, where the first two are taking place. And before we, before I play this video I just want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. It is like quite visceral and intense. Um, so if anybody feels like they might be triggered, um, I guess don't look. <laughs> it's really, um, it's kind of some intense imagery, but I want to be respectful and try to let you all know. Um, this work was what was being projected around me for Intrepid 1 and Intrepid 2. Um, this is actually, uh, I was in, I was in a, two different natural environments and I'm actually appearing to have ingested this 100 yards of white fabric. Um, and then, I'm in the, then it cuts to me in the forest where I regurgitate that fabric in red um, in a spiral around me. It was a really painful piece, a really um, intense work. And it was an endurance piece. And it, it, it was um, one of the most painful things I've ever done. It was. Um, below freezing and my mouth was cut up. I couldn't speak for days. But the work itself is really about the processing of pain sometimes. It's about going through these um, undulations and fluctuations of expansion and contraction and resistance um, and, and trauma and all these different things. So it's kind of like a visual representation of that processing of pain. And I felt like it was important to share that because a lot of times when we're in pain, um, we don't feel like we can talk about it. We don't feel like we can be open about it and share how visceral that feeling is. And so I kind of made that into um, just a visual that uh, people could kind of see kind of what that feels like and, and be present for that and not um, sugarcoat it, you know? Um, then it was also another uh, scene where um, I, on the two screens I had nature scenes like this that were showing um, the stillness that's ever present, like the, the part um, that is beneath all of that suffering and that there is always um, a peace that resides, a stillness that we can touch base with um, and that that's present during this struggle. Um, so that's what this work is pretty much about. I wanted to share this just to give those works some context and so you knew what was being shared with Intrepid, with the previous um, videos. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go forward now, if I can. Yes, this is an image of Intrepid 2 with all the women, and I'm grateful for them. Um, so my work is really 
a place where I'm transforming patterns of suffering through ritual practices. And I use movement and repetition to do this, to, to kind of build a new framework in the brain. Um, and Intrepid, I'm using my body to move in a spiral formation um, while I'm writing a series of repeated affirmations. Um, and this was a portrait that I took right after Intrepid 3, which happened on Martha's Vineyard. The first Intrepid 1 and 2 were done while I was a resident healing artist for the New Day campaign, which was focused around healing um, or uh, releasing stigma around mental illness or uh, behavioral health challenges and substance abuse. Um, and that was really transformative. And a lot of the women in Intrepid 2 were, were dealing with various levels of either addiction or um, behavioral health um, challenges. So this was a portrait that I took during, uh, after Intrepid 3, and I was in Martha's Vineyard for that, for Art on the Vine. Um, and so my work really, uh, it really documents transition and explores healing, ritual, um, personal rites of passage, ceremonial rites of passage. Um, and it has an ancestral component to it as well. Like that's deep, it's, um, it's interwoven with um, my exploration of my ancestry. Um, and uh, the, I really consider the work to be spiritual downloads. I could, that's what I call it because I feel that the work has, is filled with like this ancestral practice and this ancestral wisdom. Um, and it comes really intuitively. A lot of times my work will come like a vision and I will just see it um, or it'll come like a whisper. Um, other times it'll come like a dream um, or it will be a dream. Um, so the work, and, and I always feel compelled to create the work at that point. I think that a lot, uh, I focus a lot on my family and, and my work and, and, and the healing of my family as well because um, I come from a family of artists. My grandfather is, one, is the most influential person to me and to my work. He has really uh, taught me how to use my work as a, a way of healing myself. He's taught me everything that I know about um, art. Um, and then my mom is a poet, and so the words really come in into my work. On this image, my grandfather painted those words on my back. My grandmother, everybody is, is really supportive of, of my practice and my journey and always there when um, I'm just like, hey y'all, I need to, I need y'all to drive me down here and paint some words on my back, and I'm gonna stand in front of this tree. And they're they're fine with it. They don't even ask questions. Everybody understands. And so I've always had this freedom to be able to explore in my practice and not feel any type of, um, you know, shame or anything about what I was doing or why I was doing it. I never questioned it. I always followed that intuition. And I wanted, I wanted to talk about this work quickly because this work is um, in the exhibition. Um, these two, the last two pieces, um, the diptych is in the exhibition. And this work is important because it's kind of the start of um, the ritual work that I started to do and documenting it through photography. And Intrepid is really the next level of that where I'm coming out of the photograph and I'm allowing people to kind of like uh, be physically witness to that and be and take part in it through that, um, which is very different from me. This is just another example of ritual in my work. This was my grounding ceremony when I cut all my hair. Um, I buried myself in the ground. Um, so more about Intrepid. Intrepid, well, I'm just showing you pictures of like rituals and ceremonial work. Um, feel free to come up to me with any questions about these later because it's like a lot and I don't wanna take up too much time talking about each one. Um, the elements, uh, nature and the elements are really important to my work. They're integral to my process. Um, and this kind of is just a depiction of the time when Intrepid came to me as a vision, um, I was actually studying subatomic particle collision, which is, it sounds intense, but it's actually 
when um, quantum physicists are putting particles, subatomic particles into these particle accelerators and then extreme heat is applied to them and they move really quickly. And when they do, when they collide, they make these spirals. And so that's what's happening here um, on this piece. That's a image of uh, subatomic particles colliding. Um, it's a thermal image. And what they're doing that for is to, to find the creation molecule. So in this realm, it's like collision is more creative than destructive. So the spiral is found there. And that's part of the reason why I use the spiral, because the spiral is all about, um, well, first of all, you can find the spiral everywhere. It's found in nature. It's found galactically. Like, that's why I have this piece here. Um, it's found galactically. Uh, it's found um, subatomically. Um, and in addition to that, this is a piece that me and my grandfather did together at the top. The spiral is a really important uh, symbol for my family. My, my grandfather paints spirals all over our home. So the spiral has always surrounded me my whole life, and it has a lot of um, significance. Uh, and it's, it's sacred geometry, really. Um, so I was studying subatomic particle collisions. I was also studying neuroplasticity. I'm really interested in our ability to change our minds and then change our realities. Um, I was studying dance and movement, so I wanted to bring movement into my work a lot more. Um, I was studying alchemy. Um, so all of these things are integral in my work, as, as, for, as well as uh, spirituality, specifically African spirituality. Um, are all important. And another place I want to mention that the spiral is found is in our DNA, in, in the double helix of our DNA. And that's really significant because this work in, of Intrepid is all about um, reframing that uh, our, our thoughts and, our, and my mind and really moving out of a space of suffering and, and into a place of peace and healing and surrender. Um, this came kind of, this work came after I, oh, and I wanted you to see closer up how, how it looks um, and what it looks like. So a lot of those different aspects are embedded in this work, like of, of the spirals and of subatomic particle collisions and neuroplasticity and, and movement. Um, so I had a fire in my apartment and it, really opened my eyes up to charcoal. It actually was like four years before I actually did this piece. Um, my window was completely inflamed and I had, I put the fire out myself. It was creeping toward the ceiling and it was quite a traumatic experience. But afterward, I remember walking into my space and seeing the charred window and just like touching the charcoal and looking at it and really feeling it and thinking about that, thinking about things that go through this um, alchemical and also combustive process of fire and what's left after that. So I think of charcoal as a residual of fire, but then it even got deeper for me because I started to think about charcoal as um, a purifier, like we use it to purify water. Our bodies are water. So that's big and intrepid for me. Um, I think of it as a ritual tool, like we burn resins on charcoal. It can be used in ritual. So charcoal is really important. And when I had the vision for Intrepid, I wasn't sure I saw what it looked like was I just had this flash of myself like covered in this black like soot. And I didn't know what it was. Um, until I thought about the fire and me picking up that ashes and having that moment and I said charcoal. And what was interesting is that the charcoal literally transfers the words onto my skin. So they become in a way like a part of me. Um, so with our bodies being up to 70% water um, and water, I also think about water as the uh, prenatal fluid that we're in for nine, up to nine months. Um, and that takes me back to genetic memory because I feel like it was in the womb. I traced things, like I traced uh, my suffering back to the womb. And that's where I feel like I've, I received and understood and had, did not understand, but I had ingrained um, like a memory of, of limitation, of pain, of suffering. Um, but in addition to that, I feel like this is the part that's not normally talked about. I also 
had an inherent resilience, a power, um, an inner power, an inner peace, um, this, this uh, capacity for transcendence of that suffering, um, capacity for surrender. Um, and so that was something that I felt like it was, it was I've been actually uncovering with my practice for as long as I can remember. Um, even when I was really little, I, I had this understanding. Somehow I was, I was born into this world with this deep level of understanding that I am limitless, you know, um, and that I'm not these thoughts, that I'm not this body, and that I'm not this pain. Um, so that, and, and that also was further explored just as I continued to do ritual and as my work moved into performance and all of those things. Um, and my work really comes from the juxtaposition of like those two opposing belief systems of limitation and limitlessness. Um, and that's the crux of where things kind of flow with my work and this kind of was birthed from that space, um, from that tension. Um, so it's really important in my lifetime to end the limiting um, generational patterns in my family structure and to reprogram myself so that I don't carry it any further down into my lineage. And that's really what Intrepid is about. Um, also, uh, I, I want to enjoy my life and I want to be here for it. Um, and so that's what it, it really is about that. So, I, so as I'm in these images, you can see it's kind of a painful process in the sense that your body is moving and, and it's like really intense. But I think that that's kind of what makes it so powerful is that I'm fully engaged in that moment. In that moment when I'm writing, I'm literally all I, I am thinking about is writing. And, and, I'm, and when I was sitting in the, uh, a few slides back, in the beginning, I sit and I let the affirmation come to me. Um, the first time I did in Intrepid, I was writing, um, I release all attachments, I release all attachments, I release all attachments, I release all attachments, I embrace detachment, I embrace detachment, I embrace detachment. And then the second, that was Intrepid Zero. Intrepid One, I was writing, um, I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks. Intrepid 2, I was writing, I am free, I am free, I am free, I am free. Intrepid, this is Intrepid 3, and I was writing, um, I am, I am, I am, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. So writing, I surrender over and over again like that, the repetition, um, the movement, all of those things enforce like new neural pathways in the brain. Um, it's really kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, I would say building a new infrastructure in the brain, but more so it's like um, uncovering the original infrastructure um, and really like dismantling whatever was covered over that. So returning to myself, truly returning. Um, and and it's, it's just interesting. So essentially like the work is, is kind of, is an expression of epigenetics. Um, and epigenetics is, is the ability to reprogram the conscious and subconscious minds and ultimately create different gene expressions. Um, it's essentially that our perception changes or alters our, our genes, our genetics. Um, so I, I truly believe in this and I believe that this is what this work is about and that, and that is how I have done a lot of my healing. Um, so impermanence is deep for the work as well because impermanence is, as you can see, my body is erasing. So there's a sense of erasure that's happening. Um, and, and at the same time as being erased, there, it's still visible. Like you can still see what's at the center of that spiral. And so it speaks to, well, first it, it puts me face to face with one of my, what was my greatest fears is, is still is, is like the impermanence of my loved ones, their lives, like thinking about my grandparents and that, that fear. So it kind of put me face to face with that. So I'm dealing with something that is impermanent, but at the same time is not getting fully erased. So it's all, there's this ever presence there. Like it, it speaks to that aspect of us that never truly dies. It speaks to that aspect of us that you know, is our essence, our spirit um, that, that continues in some capacity. So I think that this piece really revealed to me um, 
what surrender looks like, what surrender feels like, how to be present in this life, how to be peaceful in this life um, amongst the undulations and the ups and downs and the challenges. Um, and the work is, a, is, my work now is to continually like reinforce that and continually uh, just keep building on that for myself so that I am moving through my life from a place of presence. Um, like this ritual really exists in the space between zero and one. Like the, the ritual exists in the moment and the movement between birth and death or um, death and rebirth. So it is the beginning and it's the end at the same time. Um, the piece that's left after Intrepid, like the nine foot by nine foot paper, is really about, um, it's really a portrait, a portrait of myself, a portrait of my family, a portrait of my ancestors, um, but it's also a portrait of the larger whole. And it speaks about the fact that we are all in a state of becoming, um, in a state of unfolding, in a state of learning and growing, being born and um, dying and being reborn in various ways throughout life. So we're constantly learning to walk again and to move again in ways that embrace surrender and that nurture us and um, that bring peace and, wis and, the, and touch base with the wisdom that's truly inherent to who we truly are. And so that's what the work is about at the core. Um, and so I thank you for your time and, you know, uh, I'm appreciative. Thank you. Ashe.